Great. Students, you are once again welcome to the Integrated Science class. And as you all know, we've been talking about respiration, the respiratory system in humans. The respiratory system in humans. Okay, so who can remind us of some of the things we've been talking about and uh, all the things we have said so far? Anything you remember we spoke about? I think we spoke about the diagram of the respiratory system, types of respiratory system, importance of respiratory system, external respiration or breathing, and a whole lot more. Today, we'll continue with what we have been talking about for this while, respiratory system. All right. Now, today, what are we looking at? Our objectives here today is that by the end of the lesson, you should be able to conduct an experiment to demonstrate that exhaled air, I taught you the other name for exhaled air, the air we breathe out. So, experiment to demonstrate that exhaled air contains carbon dioxide. We are experimenting to show that exhaled air contains carbon dioxide. We also look at hazards to the respiratory system. Hazards to the respiratory system. What are some of the things that when we do affect the respiratory system? We also look at disorders of the respiratory system. What are some of the diseases that affect the respiratory system? What are some of the diseases that affect the respiratory system? And then we will look at differences between photosynthesis and respiration. They all involve carbon dioxide and oxygen. What are the differences between photosynthesis and respiration? Then we will summarize our whole lesson and then we'll wrap up respiration and we'll look at a new topic when we meet next time okay so let's see an activity uh, this is something you have to do on your own or when we come to school we we'll all join together and we'll do it together to demonstrate that exhaled air which was also meaning expired air contains carbon dioxide the apparatus are the things we'll need so we need a beaker, we need lime water, and a drinking straw. A drinking straw is just any straw you use to sip a drink. So that is all you need. Okay, a beaker, lime water, and drinking straw. Okay, procedure. We pour the lime water into the beaker and we observe the color. Pour the lime water into the beaker and we observe the color. All right. Then after that, you blow air out of your mouth through a drinking straw into the lime water. You connect the straw to the lime water in the beaker and then you blow air out of your mouth into the lime water using the straw. Now all that you do is that you observe the color of the lime water. Observe the color of the lime water before breathing into it and observe the lime water's color after you have breathed the air into the lime water. Okay, all right, let's see. So this is a picture of what you are supposed to do. You see that there is a test tube. They didn't use a um, lime water, they used a test tube. And then that's the straw and that's the lime water. Very good. So the colorless, it will be observed after you blow the air into the lime water that the colorless lime water which shows that the lime water was colorless at the beginning it turns milky or chalky it turns milky when something is milky it means it has a color of milk white creamish kind of thing or chalky we know the color of chalk white so the lime water which is colorless like water becomes chalky or milky it becomes like milk it becomes like a drink which has a white color and the milky color of the lime water shows that the expired air contains carbon dioxide is that clear the milky color of the lime water shows that the expired air contains carbon dioxide okay that is the observation and that's the discussion 
So we have demonstrated that the air we breathe out contains carbon dioxide. And we did this by blowing the air into lime water. And the presence of the carbon dioxide changed the lime water into a milky color. All right. Let's look at hazards of the respiratory system. What are some of the things that when you do is a threat to the respiratory system? What are some of the things which when you do is a threat to the respiratory system? Smoking is bad to smoke. Smoking affects the lungs. So smoking is a dangerous activity to the respiratory system. Okay, so even it's not advisable to stay around smoke. Not just you taking in cigarettes or something, but staying around any environment which produces smoke continuously is harmful and hazardous to your health. So smoking is the number one hazard to the respiratory system. Number two, inhalation of poisonous gases. There are some gases which are not healthy, which we shouldn't inhale. Now when you inhale those poisonous gases, they are hazards to your respiratory system. They are hazards to your respiratory system. And inhalation of bacteria or fungi spores. This is very dangerous to the human respiratory system. When you inhale bacteria or fungi, okay, it's dangerous to your health. And these are the hazards. Smoking, inhalation of poisonous gases, and inhalation of bacteria or fungi spores. Okay. Let's look at the effect of smoking in the respiratory system or on the respiratory system. When you smoke, it causes lung cancer. When you smoke, smoking causes lung cancer, number one. Number two, it damages the brain and the nervous system. Smoking is very dangerous. It can damage the brain and the nervous system. That is what smoking can do. Now three, smoking destroys the cilia in the trachea and the bronchus. Remember that there is cilia in the trachea and what is it supposed to do? It's supposed to trap dust and germs so that the air that gets to the lungs is clean. When you smoke, you destroy these cilia in the trachea and the bronchus. Now all the death and all the impurities in the air will enter the body and into the lungs. So smoking destroys the cilia in the trachea and the bronchus. Then finally, number four, it damages the alveoli and reduces the surface area of gaseous exchange. This makes the smokers easily get out of breath. We know that the alveoli is the position or the place where gaseous exchange takes place. Now, when you smoke, what happens to the alveoli is that it shrinks it and reduces the surface area. So now more air cannot be diffused into the alveoli easily. So what happens is that the limited area that is left can process just a small amount of oxygen and then you are always out of breath. So one, smoking causes lung cancer. It damages the brain and the nervous system. It destroys the cilia in the trachea and the bronchus. And four, it damages the alveoli four it damages the alveoli very good now effect of smoking on the respiratory system we have two more carbon monoxide in the smoke combines with the hemoglobin of the blood and reduces the amount of oxygen that the blood can carry okay when you smoke there's a component in the smoke called carbon monoxide. I think all this while you've been hearing of carbon dioxide, but this time there is carbon monoxide in the smoke. And what it does is that it combines with hemoglobin in the blood. If the blood has an ion part called hemoglobin. So when the carbon monoxide combines with this hemoglobin, it reduces the amount of oxygen. It reduces the amount of oxygen. So your blood can't carry enough oxygen and we know how important oxygen is to the body. So carbon monoxide in the smoke combines with hemoglobin of the blood and reduces the amount of oxygen the blood can carry. Is that clear? Very good. Now nicotine in cigarettes increases blood pressure 
and makes blood clot easily. This can lead to severe heart diseases. So nicotine, it is also a component of the smoke. It is in cigarettes. It increases blood pressure and makes blood clot easily. This can lead to severe heart diseases. Very good. So these are the effects of smoke on the respiratory system. All right, let's look at the disorders of the respiratory system. What are some of the things that can affect the respiratory system? Disorders of the respiratory system. This refers to the improper functioning of some parts of the respiratory system. When some parts are not functioning well, example, the pharynx, the lungs, or the bronchial, or the bronchi, any part of the respiratory system, if it doesn't work well, then we are seeing that there is a disorder. Okay, disorders of the respiratory system refer to the improper functioning of the parts or some of the parts of the respiratory system. There are two main diseases that affect the respiratory system, and this is asthma and hay fever. Asthma is very common in our part of the world. As for hay fever, I believe most of you have not even heard about it before. So one of the diseases that affects the respiratory system is asthma and the other is hay fever. Let's look at the symptoms of asthma. Asthma causes mild chest pressure. So the person is having difficulty in breathing and therefore there is pressure around the chest. We call it mild chest pressure. And then it also shows dry cough. The person coughs and the cough is dry. There is this kind of cough when you cough, everybody tends to look at you. Dry cough is very dangerous and it is a symptom of asthma. It's a symptom of asthma. Finally, another symptom of asthma is difficulty in breathing. Difficulty in breathing because uh, of the condition, because of the asthma, air cannot go and come out easily. So the person struggles to breathe and we call it difficulty in breathing. So there is mild chest pressure, there is dry cough and there is difficulty in breathing. These are the symptoms of asthma. These are the symptoms of asthma. Okay, what can we do to control asthma? What can we do to control asthma? Asthma is sometimes genetic, meaning when your parents have it, you will also have it. It is also lifestyle related. So you can do certain things and then you get asthma. So people suffering from asthma must wear nose masks when sweeping to prevent dust particles from entering their respiratory system. If you know you have asthma or you know somebody who has asthma, the person should always wear nose masks when they are sweeping. If possible, they shouldn't even sweep at all. They should explain their conditions to the people around them so that others will sweep for them. Or if they insist on sweeping or if they can't do away without the sweeping, Anytime they sweep, they have to wear nose marks so that it will prevent dust particles from entering their respiratory system. Asthmatics should avoid coming into contact with cigarette smoke and other heavy smokes. I was telling you in the previous slide that it is not advisable to even go near any kind of smoke. So that is what we have here. Asthmatics should avoid coming into contact with cigarette smoke and any other heavy smoke. So not only cigarette smoke, smoke from firewood, smoke from burning bushes, smoke from fire that we used to cook, any other smoke is harmful to asthmatics. So asthmatics should avoid coming into contact with cigarette smokes and other heavy smokes. Asthmatics should take their medications according to prescriptions. Anybody who has asthma has a medication you're supposed to take. They should consistently take it at the right time and as it has been prescribed for them. Then finally, 
Asthmatics should avoid the use of perfumes. Asthmatics should avoid the use of perfumes. Okay. What then is hay fever? Hay fever. Hay fever is a reaction of the immune system to foreign substances. We call some things allergies. When somebody gets something into his system which he is not supposed to get into their body, he reacts negatively to the substance. And that is what happens when somebody gets hay fever. When they come into contact with foreign substances, and one major foreign substance is pollen grain. When an individual comes into contact with foreign substances such as pollen grains, they develop hay fever. What are the symptoms of hay fever? Severe sneezing. Severe sneezing. Apart from severe sneezing, they also have intense running nose. Okay, so you can say intense sneezing or severe sneezing. They also have runny nose. Most of the time, you see when you have catar, liquid comes through your nose. Yes, that is what we call runny nose. Then constantly, they are trying to pull the liquid back or they are blowing it out through their handkerchiefs. That is runny nose. When you have hay fever, that is the condition you experience. And they also have watery eyes. They also have watery eyes. This condition is not common in our environment. It's not common in our African or Ghanaian setting. Okay, what do you do to control hay fever? People suffering from hay fever should avoid coming into contact with substances such as pollen grains because the only cause of hay fever is when you come into contact with foreign substances such as pollen grains then try not to come into contact with these things at all and you will be fine okay there are other diseases of the respiratory system the first is pneumonia pneumonia is a breathing condition pneumonia is a respiratory disorder the next is tuberculosis it's a condition when people get they cough a lot tuberculosis now the next is bronchitis bronchitis is a disorder of the respiratory system the next is also what whooping cough whooping cough remember the cis killer the cis childhood killer diseases this is part whooping cough is a disorder of the respiratory system number five lung cancer lung cancer another disorder of the respiratory system then we have influenza influenza it is also a disorder of the respiratory system and then common cold common cold qatar as we call it here common cold is also a disorder of the respiratory system let's look at the differences between photosynthesis and respiration they are all parts or they are all occurrences that include exchange of gases that exchange of gases takes place so let's look at the differences photosynthesis is carried out in green plants only photosynthesis is carried out in green plants only it is only in plants that do photosynthesis human beings and animals photosynthesis do not occur in their system and the difference in respiration is that it is carried out in all living cells so photosynthesis is in green plants only but respiration occurs in all living cells photosynthesis uses energy photosynthesis uses energy but respiration releases energy respiration releases energy photosynthesis use water in the in the process of photosynthesis water is used but in the process of respiration water is released water is a byproduct water is released okay the next is that photosynthesis takes place only during the day photosynthesis it takes place only during the day respiration it takes place all the time 
it takes place all the time. Another difference is that photosynthesis uses carbon dioxide. Photosynthesis uses carbon dioxide. But in respiration, carbon dioxide is released. Carbon dioxide is released. The last difference is that photosynthesis releases oxygen. Photosynthesis releases oxygen, but respiration uses oxygen. Respiration uses oxygen. Very good. All right, let's look at the summary of what we have learned so far under respiration. Respiration is a process by which energy is obtained from food, the release of energy from food in the body of living organisms with or without oxygen. The process by which energy is released from food in the body of living organisms in the presence of oxygen or without oxygen. Now, respiration in the presence of oxygen is called aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration. And respiration without oxygen is called anaerobic respiration. When there is oxygen present during the respiration, we call it aerobic respiration. But when respiration takes place without oxygen, it's called anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration. In aerobic respiration, glucose is the substrate or the reactant in the chemical process, while carbon dioxide and water are produced as byproducts. That's the chemical formula or the chemical reaction. Glucose C six H twelve six O two, okay, plus oxygen. This is aerobic because oxygen is taking oxygen is there. Oxygen is present, and it releases carbon dioxide and then water. So this is the glucose. This is the glucose. This is the glucose. This is oxygen. This is carbon dioxide. And this is water and then a lot of energy is released okay raw materials is the glucose in the presence of oxygen carbon dioxide and water are released together with energy okay we also learned that breathing is the exchange of gases between a living organism and its surroundings breathing is the exchange of gases between a living organism and its surroundings very good we've come to the end of respiration and then we will have this evaluation as our last evaluation on respiration and we'll move to the next topic when we meet another time so question one outline the process involved in demonstrating that exhaled air contains carbon dioxide Outline the processes involved in demonstrating that exhaled air contains carbon dioxide. Number two, list three effects of smoking on the respiratory system. List three effects of smoking on the respiratory system. Number three, mention two disorders of the respiratory system. Mention two disorders of the respiratory system. And number four, list five differences between photosynthesis and respiration list five differences between photosynthesis and respiration thank you very much and we just ended respiration in humans see you on a different topic next time bye bye